so I got an extra M.2 NVMe disk and I didn't know what to do with it because my motherboard is mediocre, it just had two slots and I ran out of space. So this adapter came into picture, it's called the Amcom M.2 to PCIe Express adapter. Really useful, we'll check it out and do a full review including a speed test. Welcome back to our tech. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you so much. So welcome back to our tech and today's video is special because we have the Amcom PCIe M.2 adapter for your PC. So like I mentioned, this is very useful for those people who want to use an M.2 disc but do not have a slot. So uh, I found this on Amazon. Now I will have the links in the description uh, if you're interested. There are many brands selling these kind of devices and adapters but you have to be really careful in terms of what speed they provide you because some of them don't really st stand up to the mark i mean your m.2 might be doing really high write and read speeds maybe in excess of 3500 mb per second but you know uh, i found that this one had the highest speed among them i'm not saying that this would do the speed which it claims but this one's uh, a little more expensive than the rest of them and uh, they claim that they do a higher speed so we'll do you know read write test testing at the end of the video but uh, let's see what's in the box so this is made by amcom uh, let me remove that plastic covering so that you can see what's inside clearly the packaging is not that great honestly for the price you pay i think uh, they could have done better okay there you go so uh, it says M.2 NVMe uh, full speed uh, express card and it's pretty small in size nothing mentioned on the side so at the back the text is really small let me try and read it for you so it says product uh, model number etc etc uh, supports SSD size uh, 2250 2242 2230 2280 and of course NVMe speed ratings as well the transmission rates on the box says 8 GB per second, 16 GB per second, uh, 32 uh, gigabits per second and uh, finally it says 64 GB PS. So uh, yeah, so they promise some really high speeds and this is made in China of course. So that's it on the box, so let's get it open. So there's no seal or anything, so it's just, okay. Uh, it's nice to see that they've given you some screws. Okay, uh, there's a screwdriver too, so <laughs> really nice thought. There's an adapter so that you can clamp this onto your uh, CPU. And that's the card. It's a nice little bubble wrap for that. Let's get this off. Yeah, so this is the card they give you. So of course your M.2 NVMe will go here. In case you're familiar with that, you just have to slot it in. I'll show an example in a minute. So let's just observe the card a little bit. So it's got this nice gold plating over here. So this this is the slot. You can use the M.2 slot or you can use your uh, PCIe Express graphics card slot, which you don't use anymore. So I'm gonna use that because everything else is full in my motherboard. At the back, nothing much. Again, you have this nice tinge of uh, gold plating and pretty much looks nice. And it's it says NVMe here, so. Uh, nice touch there and big capacitor over here and that's about it and uh, I think let's see how to get this together so I got just the disc to get this job done so this is a crucial p3 plus and it's a two terabyte hard disk has really high speeds of read and write I think 5000 MB I'm not expecting any of these speeds on this one and besides I only have a motherboard which supports PC um, IE 3.0 so this is PCIe 4.0 anyway let's check it out so this is a brand new uh, M.2 disk let's get it open okay all right matching colors let's open up the disk over here a nice little booklet over here and this is your crucial M.2 disk all right so let's uh, get this installed on this one 
So all you need to do is just uh, have this inserted here. I mean, sometimes you can use a heatsink, but in this case, you don't have a heatsink with this particular uh, NVMe disk. So all you just do is just push this in and it will stand like this. And that's when you've got to use the screws which they provided you. Let's see what is in the small little cover. Okay, so this one's uh, obviously for securing this to the hard, you know, to the cabinet which you have or the case which you have. So they're given some sort of a spacer over here. I'm not too sure what that for. So this is a screw which is most important to kind of secure this to the plate. Okay, I guess you can use this spacer. Nope, doesn't work. Is there a gap? Well, it's actually quite, you know, uh, designed well. I mean, I don't think you need to use anything else in between. You just have to secure this in place. So let's see what happens if we use the screwdriver. Yeah, so there is a problem in terms of uh, almost there. Okay, so it seems secure right now. So you can see that the disc is secure. So now to have this installed in your case and getting this secure, all you need to do is just uh, take the plate which they've given you, the side clip. So this one doesn't seem to have any kind of screw. So it's just a plug and play thing. So uh, you gotta just slot this in over here and then just give it a small flip yeah, that's it. So it just gets locked into place. And then you just put this into your motherboard and this will get secure by adding the screw over here on your casing. I'll show you how that is done. So let's get this into the motherboard right now. So here's my motherboard. It's a ASRock C Legend motherboard and you can see both the slots, the primary as well as the secondary M.2 slots have been occupied. I put a heatsink also on those NVMe discs. Uh, so this is the slot I have free. That's one of the graphics card slots. It's a PCI Express slot. It's a motherboard which is PCI Express 3.0 compatible. So it's still not 4.0, but we'll use this and see whether this thing works. So yeah, uh, I'm just trying to slot this in. You can see that the space is really close to the graphics card here. So I'll have to get off one of these screws. And then once that is done, this is gonna go somewhere, uh, you know, close to this graphics card like this. So it's gonna be very less clearance for the graphics card, but since this is just half the card, I hope that should be fine. So let's get the screw off from the case and get this fixed. Okay, so my CPU is wall mounted, so I'm just trying to see if I can do it easily from here. It's gonna be difficult for sure. Okay, I never used this graphics card slot before. It's more difficult than I thought. As always, I recommend you to get this desktop down on the floor and keep it flat horizontally and then get this done because I'm doing doing this on the PC which is wall mounted and it's really difficult to do this from this angle. So do not try this. You would probably be better off if you put this on a table, on a floor or somewhere stable and then get this done from a view up above rather than sideways like what I'm doing. Once you're sure, just make sure that you uh, give it a try and see that it doesn't shake a lot or something. So, you know, it's absolutely fixed. And then you have to just fasten one of these screws over here so that it's secure in place. Right. So uh, you can tighten that. And that's that's all you got to do. So there's no other con connections. Nothing else is required. So just give it a twist and you're good to go. OK. So we can power it up now and check out how good or how fast this drive is going to work using this adapter. All right, we're all set. It's on standby. I'm going to press the power button now and it's powering on. So you can see that there's a green light just in the middle of this adapter. So it looks like everything is good. All is well. That green light probably indicates that the device is functioning OK. I'm still not sure if the hard disk is working but we shall check into Windows and see if this is all good. So yeah, there is a light on this thing and that's a good sign. So yeah, it did flicker once. 
I don't know what that is, but let's see. Okay, the computer is actually booting into Windows right now. So let's see what's going to happen. Let's see if the disk is detected. So yeah, this is Windows 11 and I'm going to just open file manager and just check out. Oh, okay. The disk is not showing up. So this is normal. You can see the two existing disks which are already inserted in the motherboard slots. But this new one is not actually detected. So for this, it's a simple fix. You need to open disk management, which used to be called in you know, the Windows XP times. So it's the same thing here. Just type disk management and something else should open up similar to this. And uh, so you can see that there is a display here which talks about the two terabyte NVMe that we just installed using the adapter. So you need to actually right click and create a new volume. So just follow the wizard. It's very simple. And uh, it'll ask you to format this whole thing in whatever format you want. So I just leave it on default, which is NTFS. And just go next. Now you can rename the disk if you want to, or you can just leave it blank and then just go next. And there you go. The hard disk is ready to use. So now when we go back to my PC, you'll see that the disk is actually on display. And it seems to be working fine. So great, the adapter works, no problem so far. So the disk is working fine, everything is functional. Now it's time for us to run some tests and see if this thing performs well. So two things here, so I'm using crystal disk. I'm not a professional, so I'm just using whatever tools are available easily. So the window on the left shows you the test with the adapter on. And I did the same test with this particular disk plugged in directly to the motherboard. Just remember, this is a PCI Express 3 motherboard, so you can't expect really high speeds. But there is a drastic difference. So if you plug it directly, you're getting speeds in excess of three and a half thousand megabits per second. And you know, this is almost half for the one with adapter. And it's the same disk here we are using. And this reading is much lesser than what the disk manufacturer claimed. So they're claiming, you know, 6,000, 7,000 and for a PCI Express 4, but this is not even hitting 3,500, which the regular disk is doing. So my verdict is this is a good adapter. If you have an old PC and you want to just put one of those M.2 SSDs in here, uh, for, from a speed perspective, it's not probably effective. But if you just want to use it for storage and you want to use one of the old disks, I think this is a great adapter to use, right? It works fine. It's very easy to use and you can make use of that empty graphics card slot for something. So that's my review on this Amcom PCI Express 4.0 adapter. Let me know if you like the video. Please do hit the like button, subscribe. I shall make more such videos. Do check out my other videos as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Artek, I shall see you on the next one. Bye.